we'll go back to the beginning. Our publisher got an iPad, loved it, um, fell in love with it, just thought it was a true game changer, and it became an immediate uh, priority in our company to develop an iPad app um, in October. Obviously, that was just two or three months we had to do it. Um, it was his vision. Uh, he thought it was a true trans transitional product, and he loved, loved, loved the Wall Street Journal. He was a Wall Street Journal print reader every day, uh, and he stopped becoming a print reader for Wall Street Journal every day. He started using his iPad only, and, he, and, and that was his, his vision. We also liked what NPR and USA Today, and you know, those early apps that came out, they were, you know, we liked, we liked those experiences. We wanted to do something like that. Um, then we fully expected to, to buy something. This was not something that we expected to have our development team build. Um, we thought to get it done quickly, um, you know, to do it the, the right way, we thought we were definitely going to end up um, buying it. So we looked at a lot of options. Um, really, a ton of options we looked at. The one that we probably came closest to using was uh, um, CCI's Woodwing um, partnership. Uh, we use CCI um, for our print publication, um, our print workflow, and for our web work workflow. It's uh, our web CMS ties directly into CCI. Um, we thought Woodwing made a lot of sense. I saw a presentation earlier, um, OC Register, and uh, that the, the product looks great. Um, we thought it would work. What we weren't sure of was if we had the resources to, to build that on a daily basis. We looked at Olive. Um, um, they had a couple of different options. They still do. Um, ironically, we didn't go with Olive, but we do have Olive, an Olive app, a print replica app in the store now, so we actually have two iPad applications. Um, but at the time, we, we were not going to use Olive, and we looked at all sorts of different options. We were, we were going to try to buy whatever we had to buy to get it up quickly. But in the end, because our developers and our development team was um, really made a nice pitch why we should uh, build this ourselves. Um, and there was three big reasons, really, in, in the end. Our content management system was a strength that we, I knew we had as a, as a strength because I work in it and I worked in it for 10 plus years. But it was, uh, it's something that we could really build on and, and grow. Um, rather than switching to something else in a different, uh, a different workflow. Uh, the technology, we'll talk about HTML5 and uh, how they built it that way, and the customer, another big reason we wanted to build it ourselves and control, um, control the entire process. So I'll go through each of those, and the first one was the CMS. It's a screenshot of our CMS, um, and that's much prettier than it looked uh, before we went through this process. Um, Prior to that, the CMS was uh, developed by programmers. It wasn't pretty. Um, it was uh, something that we used and we liked. But uh, through this process, we decided, hey, we, we can have someone make the CMS look good as well as function great. Um, but our editors were already familiar with, with, with that CMS. And not only our web editors, but our presentation team, our entire staff. We had, we had cross-trained a whole lot. And so um, the normal copy editors, those traditional um, traditional um, jobs, they were also working on the web at that time. They were familiar with that CMS. Um, using this process allowed us to make the news decisions once, to not have to rebuild something. Um, it allowed us to uh, go to multiple devices um, with one edit. Um, and it was limited production time. And that's, that's all about the streamlined workflow, which I'll detail a little bit. I talked about how it integrates directly with CCI. We like CCI, it works great for us. We can make a lot of decisions for the web right there in CCI. Um, but the web CMS is still important. There's a lot of hooks that we, we, we hook into their uh, XML and the, the feed that comes out. But it can integrate with any feed, um, our CMS. And that's what we really liked about it. It makes it very flexible for us. Um, limited extra steps. We didn't hire anybody to, to build our iPad on a nightly basis. Again. Our iPad edition is similar to a lot of what we've seen today. It's a daily download every morning, packaged the night before, um, usually about 2.30 in the morning or so. Um, so readers get up in the morning, download it. Um, it's usually about 10 to 15 megs. Um, um, but the same staff that puts together the paper every night also puts together this, and they do it um, fairly quickly. I mean, obviously, there's extra work to be done but not as much as we thought would have needed to be done if we used the Woodwing product where we built an enhanced 
uh, you know, touch every article and every page. It's, it's really more of a streamlined workflow. Again, I mentioned that we publish once, and that same package goes to our Android app, our uh, iPhone app, or iPad app. Um, and frankly, the same package feeds the Kindle and our other e-readers. We even productized it. It's called Ditto Publisher. It's built a website and everything. So like I said, it became pretty. And so now we were happy. Not only do we have a great CMS, we had one that, that looked good, too. We didn't mind looking at it. Secondly, the technology. The HTML5, our developers really wanted to build this. And usually the developers always want to build it. I mean, that's something that our leadership was expecting to hear. Um, but we weren't going to do it. We were going to buy something. We wanted to do it quickly. We wanted to focus on other things. Um, but it really made sense. We had HTML developers. They were really good. We didn't have app developers. Um, but if they learn this and they uh, expand their knowledge, then as we move forward into other products, as everything we do with newsok.com on the web or the Oklahoman in our, in our stores or uh, our uh, web applications, they, they would be able to grow and move forward and it would make us more flexible. And so that's, that was really important, um, proving that they could do it. They, they had to prove that you know, in a week they can build something that has the same you know, touch interface that uh, our publisher expected to see with the Wall Street Journal. And, Frankly, that's what he wanted. He wanted something to look like that. Uh, the newspaper experience, uh, obviously HTML5. We built an app. It's, a, it's just a player. It's just a player for our daily download every day. Um, it's a website. So if you knew the URL, you could just look at our download every day. I'm not going to tell it to you, though. That's, you have to subscribe. That's, that's next. Um, well, I talked about how the app is our player, and uh, um, so it allows us to make updates to our to our download each day. So if we want to add a section, we want to add different functionality. We're able to do that without having to send it to the store to be approved, and all of that process. And that was important to us. Some of our features, I might even jump right into it. We have a live page. We have some live weather. Um, we integrated our video um, with with Brightcove's HTML5 players. Video is something that was really important as well. If we're known for anything, we're known for our video operation. We have some great studios, um, staff, videographers, talent, um, and our, we've cross-trained our uh, reporters and editors to really work well with video. So we wanted to get this video on the iPad application, obviously. We have, uh, we have dozens of videos every day. And our expanded photo galleries. We serve those in the web view as well. Again, our goal is to keep the download package as small as we can. Um, Sundays, it can get close to 20. Um, but that, that still allows a fairly fast download. I'll jump right into some of those features here. This is uh, today's edition. Again, swiping through our live headlines aren't going to work because I'm not connected right now. I didn't want things, anything to pop up. That, on the screen, so I just disconnected. Um, but our video, again, is connected all through the same workflow. This video will play right here. It'll expand to a full screen. Uh, that video was attached uh, through our web CMS. Frankly, it was attached, uh, um, that ID was attached through CCI and when that article was created. So the, the workflow of getting these all connected is, is seamless and that doesn't have to be rebuilt when we build this each night. See if this works again. There we go. Third thing I was going to mention is the customer, um, which is probably the most important. I mean, when we when we started our process last summer, uh, we were really worried about not owning the customer. I mean, the vision that we had was the uh, um, you're a pain print subscriber. We want you to be able to access this at a discounted rate at the time. Um, we wanted to be able to connect it, and we wanted to be able to grow with that. So um, owning the customer was the absolute top priority, which is one of the reasons we built it in this way. Um, we were prepared to uh, bypass the iTunes store altogether. Um, that's how committed we were to owning the customer. There was a, we had some, you know, a little bit of gambling in our operation, wondering if uh, iTunes would accept our, uh, approve our app. Because of that, it was a free application 
but we were going to require users to go through our e-commerce process to subscribe at a monthly cost of $9.99, $4.99 if you were already a print subscriber. We've since changed that, but at the time, we were still charging them an extra $5. Um, but we did require them to go through our process to connect their current online account to their um, subscription, their, their print subscription. Um, and we even called it Operation Freedom. That was, it was a plan at the same time uh, that if we were rejected and Apple was uh, not going to allow us to have a, a free app with a uh, e-commerce process for subscriptions, we were gonna do it completely outside the store. Um, but they accepted it, and at the time they did not, uh, iTunes obviously, you probably know, did not have a uh, subscription process in place. We suspected they would uh, at some point, um, and that happened shortly thereafter. This is uh, the way it looks now. Apple changed the rules this spring. Um, uh, it, was, it was a, you know, what, three pages, I believe. I think a lot of us got that letter. Um, you know, we had to pay special attention because we were going to be uh, breaking their rules by uh, not allowing, not having the same offer in the store. And that was, that was the general rule. Whatever you're offering, you know, on your own, through your own process, you have to offer it and allow, you know, the quick purchase within the store. So uh, we had some debate of whether we were going to do that. Do we want to pull completely out, um, turn it operation freedom? We ready to turn that on again? Uh, but we decided not to. We, we really, at that point, we embraced iTunes and so well, you know, 70% of uh, something is better than 0% of nothing. So we thought that, you know, getting, uh, getting that customer, even if we couldn't connect them to their account, would still be important. But we thought there was a lot of value still in going through our process. At that point, we really organized what our, what our offerings were digitally. Um, it was no longer $4.99 for print subscribers. They got it for free. Everything that a print subscriber at that point was going to get everything digital free. Our digital archives, our, uh, um, our Olive application, which we launched about that time. That's a print replica. The, uh, uh, everything on News OK, some, some classified um, uh, benefits. All of it was bundled together. So uh, uh, we really were encouraging customers to, to bundle their digital uh, account with their print subscription. And we allowed iTunes uh, purchases at the exact same price. Now what we learned, oh, jumped ahead, sorry. There we go. Ditto Publisher, we talked about the CMS talked about how uh, we realized we had something really special there. We almost, we almost went away from it, and uh, I'm very glad we didn't. It's uh, something that we're really proud of. We're actually launching the Oklahoma State uh, University Daily Ocali application um, through our technology and our CMS, training them, I believe, today. I missed the training. I, I think that's happening today. Um, we also embraced iTunes as just another outlet. So if a user doesn't want to get all the benefits of our bundle, they, uh, they don't have to. They can just do it through iTunes. They can pay $10 a month and uh, get our app there. But the biggest thing we probably learned is that, you know, in retrospect, you know, we were kind of all over the place on what we were going to do digital, what, what, our, uh, you know, what our strategy was going to be um, with subscriptions. And this really kind of helped organize it. And that's, uh, you know, this is, our, this is one of our print ads where we're finally branded, full access, um, what they can get, all the benefits, and it really kind of helped us organize. Here's what a user sees when they go to our website to log in. So they see your best, your best value is the uh, um, $12 full access to get the print, and the, uh, that's, I believe that's a print home delivery on Sundays, starting as low as 12. A la carte, $10, the best, the best deal is to get it all. And so we talked a little bit earlier about um, producing our content one, having to go to all of these different devices. Um, that's really what we think we've accomplished in some, in some capacity. And I believe that's all I have for you today. Michael? All right, guys, just give me a sec to get 15 minutes. set up here.
So my name is Mike Winook, and I work for The Onion, uh, America's finest news source. We were founded in Madison, Wisconsin in uh, 1988, and, but now we're based in Chicago. We've made a little bit of news recently by moving everybody from New York over to Chicago. That's going to happen over the next few months, so it's kind of exciting to have everybody in one house. Um, our, we have a number of digital properties right now. We have The Onion, which is um, our flagship website, but not too far behind it is the AV Club. The AV Club has spun off on its own. It used to be just the, the back section of The Onion newspaper, but now is you know, neck and neck with The Onion website as far as traffic and visitors goes. And a couple years ago, we started venturing into the, the app market. This is before I joined. I started in um, July of 2010. But we had already had an iPhone app, an Android video app out at that time, um, an AV Club film app. We were just experimenting with uh, various apps. But um, we noticed something that our mobile websites, our app traffic was kind of going crazy and growing, growing very rapidly. And we realized that this is going to be a very important part of the business very soon. Um, we're a very small company. We only have four full-time engineers and three designers. That, and we work on everything at once all the time. That includes the AV Club website, the Onion website, the, the iPad app, wh whatever comes up. We're also the, the support team that takes care of you know, any you know, ad operation issues that come up. So what, whatever solution we were going to bring in-house had to be lean and had to be easy to manage and could not introduce any additional work. And all these new platforms started popping up that we have to support. Um, Kindle and Nook, for example, are feed-based products where we, we basically generate daily feeds and send them off to Amazon and Barnes and Noble and they resell but you know that's you know one thing that we have to support. We recently launched um, a Google TV channel as well for all you Google TV owners out there. It's not exactly doing well but we're on it. And of course the big ones are you know iOS and Android. Those are the the two platforms we're really really focusing on and the nice thing is that they're very similar. So initially, we, we outsourced all of our app work. So the, the iPhone app that's in the store right now was built by a third party. The Android video app was built by a third party. And we didn't really want to jump in and invest a lot into app development early on, right when these devices popped out. We, we couldn't really afford to make mistakes and go down an, an expensive route without really understanding the market yet. We don't have the research lab that New York Times does, and they're out on every platform the minute it launches, and their stuff always looks awesome. We don't have those kinds of resources. So we had a wait and see mentality where I kind of took a step back and wanted to see how the market unfolds. We weren't even thinking about an iPad app until close to the iPad 2 launch. So we, we felt we kind of played it safe and wanted to see how things unfolded. So our so our outsourced apps did pretty well. They got a lot of downloads, but since, since we did outsource and on some of those internationally, it took a very long time to um, resolve issues. And as new Android um, OSs were coming out, the, the video app kept, kept breaking on new devices and just really produced a very frustrating experience for all of our users. And during this time, we were getting more and more emails, more and more downloads for both the mobile website and these apps, but we weren't really in control. We were at the mercy of our, of our third party vendor. And we came to the conclusion that this, this is the future and it's too important to outsource and be at the mercy of a third party. We run our own website because that's almost the, everything that we do now. And we should run our own apps and mobile sites. So 
how, how do we do this? I mean, none of us were app developers, I and mean, we're all we're all website guys, and we've seen some places like USA Today, NPR, use HTML5 pretty well and pretty convincingly, and to mimic that native experience. So we said, hey, let's let's take a stab at this and see if we can do it ourselves. So the initial prototype took about four to five weeks to build. Um, during that time, I probably wrote and rewrote the thing f four times and just like scrapped everything, learned new techniques, and really got a feel for all the really cool new stuff that HTML5 offered. Uh, there's something called the application cache that lets you save images and other like JavaScript and CSS files locally. So offline mode is totally possible with HTML5 with a little bit of clever use of coding. And th that technology also lets you push updates only when something changes on the server. So the overall, the overall architecture of this is almost exactly like a real website with a few extra bells and whistles that make it more app-like. The, like, like the, the Oklahoman, we're just a URL that I'm gonna actually tell you guys. You could go to and po poke around at it and see all the cool stuff that's going on there. But basically it's just, just a URL. Everything's loaded on the fly, but thanks to some of these uh, cool new HTML5 um, technologies, we can, we can go offline, we can save things, we can save articles in a local database and mimic the, the swiping exactly right. Getting, the, getting it to feel exactly right did take a little bit of tuning. Uh, we designers were really not happy with my prototype. They're like, this feels like garbage. This is, this is unacceptable. We should have gone the native route. There was a big, big to do. But um, I tried to explain to them, that, hey, this isn't really fine tuned yet and I only built this in a month and I just learned this stuff recently. So one of the things is that this thing crashed all the time. And we weren't writing this in Objective-C. We were writing this in um, just a website that loaded inside of a container that was packaged in an app. So we really didn't have a lot of control over what was happening inside of the app and why iOS decided to shut us down every time we use too much memory. So one of the really frustrating things was debugging that and figuring out how to reduce memory or memory usage of the, of the web app itself. The swiping felt really choppy. It was it just lag behind your finger, it didn't feel good, and it was noticeably crappy. We, we tried to add, load ads in there too at the same time while, while you were swiping. So you'd, you'd be swiping, you'd see everything kind of pause, the ad would pop up, load in, and it just was a totally miserable experience. And the worst part about it, it took two minutes to start up. So when you were fetching new articles, it took two minutes, and the download happened almost instantaneously, but the actual process of saving the, the articles into the <coughs> database took forever. So it came out with a few optimizations. Um, the, the reason the crashing happened was because of the images. We had big images in there and loaded them as soon as, as, soon as we needed them for you know, subsequent pages. But one, one cool trick is if we, we took out the images from pages that weren't visible and the crash just magically stopped. So it took a little bit of trick code to make sure that images were being pulled out and put back in when they were visible, but the results were fantastic. So the two minute startup time was due to the, the poor performance of this new technology called um, this WebSQL database that the WebKit browsers, so Safari and Chrome support. It, it, it's cool because we can have um, a local database similar to one that would run on a server and pull out articles by section. So we could have pull out all the sports articles, pull out all the 
the image articles just from this nice database. It's really elegant in theory, but absolutely slow and horrible in reality. So pulled that out and just store the articles as one big blob of data and just work with it on the fly and then went from, from two minutes of load time to down to 15 seconds. And the, the, the other thing that was pretty lousy was the, the general swiping. It, it turns out we weren't taking advantage of the, the iPad's hardware acceleration. So the, the swiping and the moving of all these images and, and, and images and text like back and forth with the finger can really take advantage of the, the 3D um, the 3D processor inside of the iPad. So the CSS supports 3D transforms instead of the regular two-dimensional ones that go straight to the hardware and get very close to native performance. And another thing we noticed with ads was that if we loaded them up front right when everything was loading for the application and just displayed them as necessary, we avoided the, the jerkiness for the most part. It's still not quite there yet on the old iPad, but the iPad 2 is a little bit faster and snappier. It, it runs like flawlessly on the iPad 2. All right, so that was uh, the, the very technical portion, but now we could kind of look at it and I could show you some of the design decisions that we made and explain why we did that. So th this is the, the home screen, and this is the, the one feature item. So the only work that the, the web producer has to do is decide what the first image is, the, the first feature item is every day. Everything else comes directly out of the CMS and just flows in out of, basically it's, our, it's a duplicate of our RSS feed. It's a little bit customized to get the information in the right format for the application, but it's basically a JSON version of our RSS. So you'll notice that the images don't load until you're on the page and that's for memory considerations and makes the app a lot more stable. The first page is the only one that has this kind of special layout. We kept everything you know, very minimal, everything almost as identical as possible. We don't hand lay out every page. We, we don't have the resources for that. Oh God, sorry guys. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nasty one. But, but we, we have videos and um, videos in line with our, with our article text. This is just using the, the standard um, HTML5 player, which, which supports Um, AirPlay as well, so just using the, the native HTML5 player inside of the app just automatically gives you access to AirPlay, which is kind of cool. You, this is the, the Scion is our sponsor for through October 31st, and we, we pop up these ads as you swipe. For longer articles, we can, we can, you can scroll down. And we have a number of sections that could go through and, and these all have a, kind of a unique look to them. You'll pull up one of these video articles and just swipe through. And this is our interstitial ad unit that pops up every, I think every 10 or 11 swipes. <coughs> so this also runs perfectly in the browser. Well, there, there's a few things missing in the browser version, but that wasn't really the intention to make this used by the browser. But for a developer, it, I only tested in the iPad to 
in, at the very end. So I developed everything directly in the browser and built it in a way so it's flexible and can conform to nearly any aspect ratio that these crazy Android tablets are gonna throw out at us. So the goal was to develop this for the iPad application, but use this exact same code for Android. So notice how the images kind of re scale and recrop on the fly. This looks okay on the 1024 by 600. Um, it looks pretty good on right, the, the five by three, the, the, the four by three screens and, and in portrait, it switches over to a slightly different layout. And the subsequent grid also reflows at these various screen sizes. So there's still a little bit of testing that needs to be done for all, all these different aspect ratios, but the goal is to get this running everywhere on every device. Okay, so next up, we, we've got very bold plans for HTML5. We're, we're happy with how this, this iPad app turned out and we're, we're doubling down, actually quadrupling down in like this next quarter. We'll, we'll be launching a version of basically this iPad app for iPhone, Android phones, and Android tablets over, over at some point over the next few months. And even go a step further, similar to what Boston Globe did, I think they did a really great job with that new design of having the content reflow for all screen sizes, even down to the phone. We're, we're gonna make this um, this tablet app, actually, if you do make a screen, if it does load on a smaller screen, it will reflow in a completely different way. And the goal is to keep all the backend code exactly the same, the, and even the, the JavaScript side identical, just have you know, slightly different CSS in there for the different screen sizes. So HTML5 is great, but it is, is no silver bullet, and you can't just use that when launching in like in the iOS store or in the Android marketplace. The, the wrapper itself has to do a few additional things. <coughs> Can't switch, okay. I, I wanna show you guys the, our share tools. So this is a little bit of custom code, it's actually a, a third party open source project called ShareKit that hooks into, that hooks in all these different social services that let users share through Twitter, Facebook, and a number of other services. So we're, this isn't pure HTML5, this is actually all native code, but we didn't have to do any of it, just plugged it in and it all works. And I, I think there's more and more solutions out there like that. One of the things we want to introduce are notifications as well to get people back into the app. And there are, there are third party services that can wire that in for you. And actually, there are services out there that target both Android and iOS with notifications. So you could put a notification in, in one box, push one send button, and it'll go to all your Android and iPhone or iOS installs. So we did actually hire an app developer, so it's, I don't think it's a cop out, but we, we are doing everything in HTML5 going forward, but we do need some in-house capability to you know, tune these apps and make sure that if we do wanna introduce them like notifications or build out our share tool support, or even do something with iOS's newsstand, we're, we're starting to explore that. We're not exactly issue-based right now, so I'm not sure how that would work, but we, we might change that up and look into subscription possibilities with the, the native, um, with the iOS marketplace stores. So we're, yeah, we're, we're gonna keep doing it this way. You can download the app at that location that's just a redirect to 
the iTunes store or just search for Onion in the iTunes store. You can check this out in Chrome or Safari, just theonion.com slash tablet. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tell you guys that, but you can check it out, see, see the code, and see how it's all put together. And uh, follow, follow us on Twitter, at The Onion. We're the, the third most followed news organization. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we do consider ourselves a news organization <laughs> on Twitter. So any, any help, we, we want to beat CNN. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, 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 everything. Thanks, guys. And uh, I guess we'll do some questions and answers now. Yeah, got a few minutes. Yeah, there, back. You know, I'm not the developer or the designer, but uh, I, I know who designed it. I know that he was he was designing a, a newspaper experience specifically for um, the iPad. So uh, the the fonts he chose, I I might have to get back to you. And I, I think he'd love to answer that question for you. So I'd like to talk to you afterwards and get get that answer. I know that uh, we wanted to feel like the Oklahoman, but we didn't want it to be a replica. So. Um, you know, you're, as you're swiping through it, you know that you're with our newspaper product, but um, I'm not sure about the exact fonts he chose. Okay, any more questions? Yep. Oh, for the, for the various uh, swiping, it's all it's all CSS and JavaScript, so. Yeah, using uh, the, the 3D CSS transforms, even though it's only in 2D, it still takes advantage of the hardware acceleration. So that's how we, it gets pretty smooth. Do you embed iframes in any of your stuff? Uh, there are no, oh, there are a number of hidden iframes that are used to load ads into, and then the HTML is pulled out of that and displayed later on. but. In the actual visual experience, there are no iframes. Yep. Did you did you find uh, much actual value in the local storage mechanism, the web SQL, and, and so on? I, I would have loved to used uh, the the web SQL, but that was just horribly, horribly slow on uh, the iPad one. It would have been a really cool mechanism, but. We are using that, uh, just the regular local storage mechanism that lets, lets you store string values to store the, the big blob of the, from the feed. And just we parse that for the, if there aren't any changes, we just parse that and use that to render. So that, it's the only thing we use, just save one, one value. And that's everything in one big blob. And it's really fast. All right. Oh, one more. So that your whole website is one JSON object. All, all, all the data, all the data. So all the article data, the image URLs, the video URLs, and there's different image crops in there. So those are all separate URLs in that feed. And yeah, the headlines are separated out too. So it's basically yeah, just a big JSON blob. But then all all the processing happens client side, and the layout happens client side. For all of the pages? For all of the, for, yeah, for the, the article pages and for the, the section pages as well. And that allows you to cache uh, tabs? Or well, we cache the, right, so the, all the, the JavaScript and HTML are cached through the, what do they call it? It's the, the application cache. So that's all, and that's only, updated whenever we make a change. So one of the benefits is if we, if we do change like some CSS or JavaScript, next time you load and refresh new content, you get a whole new version of the app. Otherwise, the only thing that gets downloaded is the, the block of JSON. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. All right, thank you, guys.